ladies we are in the month of september and this month we're going to be talking about mary of bethany um and by the end of this video we are going to understand how to be grateful how to demonstrate gratitude to god um in the way that mary of bethany did and so if you're interested in learning more about lifestyle manifestation and creating a life that is pleasing for the lord make sure that you hit the bell and subscribe to our channel and so i'm just a mom wife woman um psychologist and i'm just trying to live a life that is you know worthy of god's you know honor and you know i just i just love speaking to women and i've definitely gone through my own set of issues and things in this life and so um just imparting a little bit of the knowledge that i've learned and um my experiences and so today we're going to be focusing on john chapter 12 verse 1 through 7 and it reads as follows six days before the passover jesus arrived at bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. And so to provide a little bit of context to this passage, um, Mary, Lazarus, and Martha were siblings. And um, Mary, you know, they, they hung out with Jesus. They followed Jesus. They, they knew of his teachings, of his miracles. And God had, Jesus had made the promise to, um, to Martha and to Mary that, you know, he would raise or have... Lazarus come back from the death for his own glory. And so we see that that God follows through on that. You know, Jesus, uh, Lazarus dies and, you know, God, um, Jesus resurrect him. And so we have Martha here, who Martha and Mary, who have seen the miracles of that God has done, right? She's seen how amazing um, Jesus and God have been in her life. And so they decide to throw this you know, dinner to host this dinner in order to, you know, honor Jesus. And so Jesus wasn't really, at that point, Jesus wasn't really speaking out much in public because he was being openly persecuted. And so they have this gathering at the house and we see that Martha is, you know, she's hosting. She's, you know, making sure that things are okay, opening the door, making sure that her guests are okay. And then there's Lazarus, who's kind of, you know, sitting back, enjoying the conversation and enjoying the company of Jesus. But then we see Mary, who is on the floor, not moving, not, not talking, not hosting, but just listening to Jesus speak. And we see that she is moved to bring nard, which was a very expensive perfume. And the, the text is not explicit, but I'm sure she didn't just pour a couple of drops. I'm sure she just poured the entire thing at Jesus's feet and then used her hair to dry it up and clean it out. And then as any time that a, a woman does something you know, extravagant or out of the box or bold, there was a man. Judas who commented and so wanted to embarrass her in front of Jesus but Jesus did not allow that he he stood up for her and so what we see in the story of Mary of Bethany is a few things we see that Mary was a witness she knew because she had experienced it herself that God and Jesus were alive and a redeemer and 
the the ones who had taken her her brother from the dead to to life and so she had not only has she heard but she had personal experience and how many of us have personal experience of what god has done in our lives how many of us have seen god's hands move how many of us have seen god answer prayers answer prayers for our family bring people back from 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 sickness heal us bless us and Mary knew she had seen it. Um, and so another thing that we see is that Mary acknowledged Jesus. When he showed up, there nothing else existed for her. She could have been hosting. She could have been chilling and relaxing like Lazarus. But instead, she decided to give him her full attention, to give him her full respect, and to listen Um and be still. And so she was attuned to what was going on and she was attuned to Jesus' spirit. So we know that she was a witness. We know that she acknowledged the presence of Jesus. And we also see that she gives him her all. This perfume was probably her most prized possession, her most expensive possession. And we see that she extravagantly pours it out, not caring about what's going to happen, what people are going to say, you know, who's going to come in, where she's going to, you know, get money from tomorrow, you know, how much this is going to cost her. She was, she gave him her all. And we see that not only did she give her him her all with her possessions, but with her body. And we see that the scripture says that she went on her knees and she dried his feet with her hair. So not only was she a witness, not only did she acknowledge Jesus, not only did she give him her all, she used her body as a way to gratify Jesus and as a way to show her gratitude. And so what we also see in this story is that there's the critics and there will always be the critics. It doesn't matter if, if she wouldn't have done that or if she did, um, someone was going to have something to say. And we see that, Ju that Judas stands up and he tries to chuck her and he tries to embarrass her. Um, so what we're trying to see through this story is that if you have ever witnessed God do anything, um, if you have ever seen God answer a prayer for you, you have got to be a witness of that. You, We cannot forget. And I know that with the daily struggles and things and all the things going on it's really easy to forget when god got me out of that situation or when god provided or when god did this right we kind of focus on the moment on and on what's next and but we have to take a moment to sit back and say wait a minute let me witness let me let me sit down and acknowledge right the things that god has done for us the second thing is that we see that god that she acknowledges him she takes a moment to stop everything else that she's doing and to just listen. And we do that when we pray. We do that when we meditate in the Lord. We do that when we um, read his word. We do that when we praise and we worship. We acknowledge that God is alive and Jesus is alive and that he is present and that he is worthy of our acknowledgement. We also see that he gives him her all. All that she had, all of her possessions, she gave them without thinking about anything. And how many times do we have all this money and things and time and we're kind of holding on to ourselves instead of giving it, instead of tithing, instead of giving it to other people, instead of that are need needy, instead of blessing the church, instead of blessing a charity. And so we see that she gave her all to him. And not only did she give her all with her possessions, but she gave her all with her body because we can glorify and gratify the Lord with our bodies. We can raise our hands. We can shout. We can go on our knees. And so we see that she did all of these things despite what other people were going to think about her, despite what other people were going to say, and despite other people's intentions of embarrassing her. And so I want us to take a moment that sometime during this month and think about how are we showing our gratitude? How what is our demeanor? Are we being bold and and extravagant and um outlandish with how we're letting the Lord know that we are grateful for the things that he has done for our life or are we holding back? Are we worried about what people are going to say? Are we worried about um you know how we're going to be looked at or or in what positions of embarrassment we're going to be placed in? And you know, so I want you to 
throughout the month as you're reading your Bible and meditating and praying to the Lord, think about how are you showing your gratitude with your things, with your body, with your attention. Um, and so, you know, let's be grateful. Let's show gratitude for the things that God has done for us. And so if you enjoy our videos, make sure you check out our link at unorthodoxgroup.com and don't forget to hit like. Thank you. Take care.